Now, KCAU 9 News starts with your forecast first. Well, we can see a hint of that sunlight out there, Siouxland, as we see that sunset as well has been done now out from Wayne, Nebraska. What conditions that were warm today as temperatures are barely falling to what is more typical for seasonal highs with mid-30s across the viewing area. You can see 35 in Sioux City, but there are still some 40s up north in South Dakota as that warm weather is sticking around. And I'll let you know how much longer we have with that warm conditions as KCAU 9 News starts right now. We are Siouxland Proud. This is KCAU 9 News at 6. And good evening. Thanks for being with us tonight. I'm Tim Seaman. Sophie's on assignment and she'll join me coming up a little bit later. First tonight, a Spencer company is facing a lawsuit. The city of Spencer filing suit against a local processing plant it says is emitting noxious and offensive odors throughout the city. The news has many citizens feeling relieved. We'll take a closer look in our top story tonight at 6 o'clock. For more than a year, residents that we talked with say that the city has smelled like rotten eggs due to the company Isonova, an egg processing plant for dog food. Uh, people across town say that they've experienced that smell, but businesses surrounding the Isonova facility say dealing with an obnoxious odor has become a daily occurrence. John Haas, the owner of Simp Meeting LLC, tells us that it's common to hear from customers about the strong smell. We're customer facing, so they come in and obviously we get comments on the smell all the time. Um, just it's nasty, don't want to get out of their cars, that kind of thing. They'll call us on the phone and they'll say, does it smell out there today? After working for months with the company to find a solution to that odor issue, it has now filed a lawsuit against the company for emitting noxious and offensive odors. The city filed suit after Isonova failed to meet a timeline for disposing of the odor. Coming up tonight at 10, KCA United reporter Tyler Euchter shares how several Spencer residents are making their voices heard regarding that smelly issue. Iowa's last round of COVID-19 era stipends for licensed and registered child care providers is now available. Governor Reynolds announcing the awards will range from ten dollars to $50,000 based on the program's size and number of applications received. That money can be used for one-time expenses that are related to employee recruitment and retention, minor renovations, or upgrading of equipment. Now, in order to be eligible for uh, the situation, the providers must be a licensed child care center or child development home and have their active registration or licensing status verified and cross-checked to have an application for funding. Those applications, by the way, can be made now through January the 12th. Addressing the shortage of available child care is a priority here in Iowa and in Siouxland as well. Now a new partnership is aiming to help families Sioux City's Crittenden Center will soon be providing child care through a partnership with the Lamar's Community Daycare Center. The Crittenden Center announcing today that it will be purchasing the Lamar's Building Blocks location. Business leaders there say that the area is short, more than 400 child care spots, so the Lamar's Community Daycare Center was created. Officials with the program and Crittenden Center tell us that they will help provide many benefits for the community. I mean, we're going to provide before and after care. We also want to, you know, have a focus on family and we're going to have some resource workers that's going to be able to build out, you know, to reach families at that point too. So whether you've got a, a baby or a two-year-old and a school-ager, that, that we are able to serve those families just in one stop and get their kiddos to school so they can focus on work and um, that's really just caring for the family holistically. Once the transition is finalized and Lamar's Community Daycare Center opens, we're told that the facility has the potential to provide more than 200 child care slots, helping cut into that child care deficit. Time now to check in with meteorologist Victor Perez once again. And uh, Victor, after a pleasant day, as you mentioned, things have started to feel a little bit more like uh, seasonal temps. 
little bit, Tim, but we're not going to be dropping off too much through the evening hours, and part of that's due to the fact that we warmed up so nicely throughout the daytime, with most areas seeing temperatures about 4 to 10 degrees above what we saw yesterday, 24 hours ago at 6 o'clock on Tuesday, as we'll see that uh, warmest conditions have been up to our north, actually, where they've stayed a little bit warmer, despite the fact that we've seen a few more clouds uh, sliding through here in central Siouxland, but we won't be seeing too many clouds through the overnight hours. We'll see temperatures that fall into the 20s, but mostly clear conditions remaining as those 20s don't even cool off too much. So we'll be expecting a pretty warm evening and to a start of the day tomorrow that still won't be feeling too uh, mid-December like, but uh, we could be seeing a dip coming up soon. Tim? All right, Victor, we'll check back on that. Well, a growing number of out-of-state students could soon be attending South Dakota public universities. The Board of Regents is being asked to consider allowing students from Minnesota, Kansas, and Missouri to pay in-state tuition as part of the Dakota Advantage program. Regents are set to meet coming up next week. Beginning in the fall of 2019, students from Iowa, Nebraska, North Dakota, Wyoming, Montana, and Colorado were offered in-state tuition as part of that program. Illinois and Wisconsin were added four years later. Well, we're in the middle of deer season, and if you have a deer hide that you don't know what to do with, you might consider donating it for a good cause at Christmas time. Elks Lodges across America participate in what is known as the Veterans Leather Program, and that initiative provides crafted leather gloves for veterans in wheelchairs. The Elks Lodge is asking hunters to donate deer hides to help create the warm leather that keeps veterans' hands protected, as well as leather craft kits to help veterans develop new skills. Overall, the Elks Lodge makes sure that nothing goes to waste goal would be that we never see a deer hide get thrown away. They can be turned into something that can help the veterans that come into the craft leather at where they make goods, use it for occupational therapy, and you can see some good out of something that many hunters just discard in the field. Eleven states donate deer hides for the cause, and while there may be some friendly rivalries, the real champions are those who receive the leather goods. The states kind of compete. We used to be number one for the last 12 years or so. Missouri's been number one, and we've been trying to knock them out of the number one seat. But the real winners are the veterans. So far, the Sioux City Elks Lodge has received more than 100 deer hides. And if you have a nice deer hide that could still be donated, you're asked to, to take it to the designated area behind the Sioux City Elks Lodge. Members of the lodge there will ship the hides and they'll be tanned on December 31st. Well, each year, hundreds of local children find a gift under the Christmas tree thanks to the generosity of Siouxlanders and the Salvation Army and Operation Toys. KCAU 9 is once again a proud partner in that mission. And we're checking in tonight to see how things are going at one of the local drop-off locations. That's where co-anchor Sophie Erber is tonight. Sophie, how are things going at Bombgars on Hamilton Boulevard? Things are great here, Tim. Thank you so much. Uh, I'm in the unofficial tractor aisle, at least that's what I'm calling it, here at Baumgars. My oldest son, Eli, would absolutely love it. There are tractors, uh, trucks of all kinds. There's actually ones you can ride in up top. People have been stopping in, buying all kinds of gifts. And because we broke this news on your KCAU 9 News at 5, Baumgars is now not just offering 20% off of all toys and actually your whole shopping cart, so not just the toys, but 25% tonight just to help us out here with Operation Toys with the Salvation Army. We are so proud to be a sponsor, uh, a, a partner with them once again. And one of the women who is about to be very busy wrapping all of these beautiful gifts donated to Siouxland children is Carissa Zumwalt. Carissa, she's the captain. Thank you so much again for joining us. Yeah, thank you for having me out here. So we've been talking to you uh, for a couple weeks now, and uh, the generosity has been awesome from the community. We try to give gifts to at least 400 kids. That's what we did last year. I know the goal this year is 1,000, so please do help us uh, make that happen. But there's a couple age groups that are tougher to shop for and things you might not think about um, if you do want to donate. So tell us more about that. Yeah, so um, those boys ages 10 to 12, they're just difficult to shop for. <laughs> you know, they're kind of in the in-between of those cars, the little cars, and wanting, you know, video games and all that kind of stuff. But they're 
there are a lot of things here at Baumgars that I'm seeing that those boys would just love. Um, Nerf guns, uh, scooters, yep. um, gosh, I'm trying to think of what else, but those kinds of things they would absolutely love. So if you can pick up one of those extra, that would help us tremendously get those boys some really awesome gifts. I feel like the grandparents would be able to really help us out here because they probably have some of all ages and right. they know what those uh, tougher uh, kids are to shop for. So um, again, tell us how this all works. So we only have a couple days left. If people want to drop off gifts here or at KCAU, our studio, we're collecting as well. What happens next? Because you're about to be very busy. Yeah, so we're going to take these toys and we're going to match them with the, the children that have been signed up and their wish list that they give us and make sure that they get the things that they really enjoy, that they like playing with. And then the parents are going to come pick those up and just get them ready for Christmas morning. So it's a lot of details behind that short little <laughs> snippet, but um, we're really excited for that. All right. Thank you so much. Uh, the work you do is so important here in Siouxland. So thank you. And uh, we'll see you here in a few minutes. Now, if you're in the area and you'd like to come out to Baumgars, we'll still be here. That good discount is till 630 tonight. But for now, reporting live in Sioux City, Sophie Erber for KCAU 9 News. I'll send it back to you in the studio, Tim. All right. Stock your stuffing or st stuff your stocking, I should say, while you're there tonight, Sophie. Still to come tonight, a couple of GOP presidential candidates are back in Iowa vying for people's votes. We'll check out Vivek Ramaswamy and former President Donald Trump where they're at holding events. That's coming up, but first, let's check back with Victor. And folks, I'll let you know about a warm end for the week, potential Friday showers, and continued warmth on your 9 on 9 after the break. You're watching KCAU 9 News with Tim Seaman, Sophie Erber, Meteorologist Victor Perez and Sports Director Anthony Mitchell. This is KCAU 9 News at 6. And now with Siouxland's most accurate forecast, Meteorologist Victor Perez. I remember all of us maybe a month or six weeks ago talking about that we didn't really care what it did overnight temperature-wise mm -hmm. as long as it stayed warm in the daylight hours and man that has come true. That's been the case, Tim. We've seen warm weather. I'm pretty sure plenty of folks out there enjoying the warmth that we're still enjoying in Siouxland. Though we are going to be cooling off a little bit, but still won't be bad temperatures to start out today tomorrow morning. We'll see that currently the studio camera shows a little bit of traffic moving along down Highway 20, while I-29 looks uh, pretty similar out there as conditions have been favorable with temperatures still in the mid-30s. That's actually our normal daytime high at 35 degrees. Pretty nice to be enjoying it now at 6 as we'll see that we do feel just a tad cooler. Feels like 32 degrees thanks to south southeastern winds with a humidity value getting closer to 50%, but it's struggling to rise up with most area seeing dew points that are in the teens and 20s as temperatures are in the 30s still. No one in the 20s and no 40s anymore as Yankton is now at 39 degrees. Another holdout earlier, Sioux Falls now at 38 as we see that Wayne is at 31 and 34 in Orange City with dew points that are across the area in the teens and we have seen a few 20s but we won't be dropping off that much for the overnight hours so conditions are going to be uh, pretty dry overnight as we see southern winds still taking hold of the area. We'll see winds between 5 and 10 miles per hour and a little bit of warm air advection with the southern airflow has led to the warm weather that we were able to enjoy today, though it is starting to feel just a tad cooler with wind chills across the area in the 20s. Feels like 26 in Orange City and in Sheldon, matching in Storm Lake as Cherokee feels like 24 degrees. They're a coolest spot, but 31 in Wayne, 30 in Norfolk, and 31 in Vermilion as well as most of the viewing areas in the, the cooler temperatures. But we'll see that some clouds are trying to make their way in. Overall, it's been a pretty clear daytime, but we've seen more clouds moving in from Nebraska, extending across the area, though they are thinning out a little bit and starting to get a little bit lower as conditions have been clear across most of the high plains and the Midwest as well, though they have clouds streaming by Lake Superior into Lake Michigan as conditions are expected to be clear and quiet here in Siouxland as we progress through tomorrow as well because we'll see that overnight we do try to see some clouds, but overall we stay clear. There's the hint of some showers trying to form up out in Nebraska that try to make their way in as we go through the afternoon hours on Thursday, but we'll see that those showers really kind of pass through and they're expected to be pretty dry with those sprinkles not really holding together until we see more showers overnight into Friday morning morning with some light rainfall through the morning hours as clouds really move in and stick around throughout the day on Thursday and persist through Friday as well. 
with conditions that show another low pressure and a cold front inching its way as we progress through the evening hours of Friday. That could lead to some more showers in the early evening as you see that rainfall running through in Nebraska. Now temperatures this evening falling down into the mid 20s, quiet and mild and pretty clear as well as we'll see that tomorrow will start off sunny, but it won't be the case all day as we see more clouds. But temperatures also increasing as they rise into the low 50s here in Sioux City and highs across Siouxland will be in the uh, low 50s and some upper 40s as we do get a little bit cooler there for Friday with those showers. Afterwards, the passage of that cold front making it from upper 40s to low 40s there on Saturday. So we cool off and there's going to be some 30s in the area. But even then, we start to warm up with a flip-flop of temperatures rising into the upper 40s, low 40s for a few days before we settle into mid 40s as we progress through the upcoming week with the first day of winter showing some unseasonably warm weather because by that time next Thursday, our high should be in the 30s instead. And Tim, we don't see a single 30 for a high on there. Those, those highs are uh, just amazing, but mm -hmm. I suppose we should start to be concerned again, certainly contributing to our dryness across the area. Dry conditions still something that we're having issues with, with abnormally dry at the very least in Siouxland, and plenty of locations still seeing drought. All right, thanks. Still to come tonight, former President Donald Trump is back in Iowa, visiting eastern Iowa tonight. We'll take a look at what he has in store for his third trip to the Hawkeye State this month. Coming up next. Former President Donald Trump is back on the campaign trail here in Iowa tonight, this time on the eastern side of the state. A live look right now there, at the horrible. Commit Worst to Caucus event underway in Coralville. The event is expected to, to feature Iowa videos General instructing Republicans on how and where to take part in the in-person Iowa caucuses Brennan coming Bird. up January 15th. Let's take a quick listen. State Representatives Luana Stoltenberg. Luana. Wherever you may be, Luana, thank you very much. Great supporter. Steve Bradley. Thank you, Steve. Great. Latest Des Moines Register NBC Heather News Hall. Mediacom poll shows that the former thank president you. has grown his lead over thank the other you, candidates here in Mark Iowa, Cisneros. now receiving 51% support, with thank Florida you, Governor Ron DeSantis pulling in 19%, and, Coffin, and former U.N. Ambassador Nikki Haley now logging 16% support here much. in Great Iowa. Job, Another GOP presidential candidate in the Hawkeye State today as well, entrepreneur Vivek Ramaswamy in far northwest Iowa making stops, several of them, in Okaboji, Esterville, Emmitsburg, Pocahontas, Lakeside, as well as Shaler. Vivek will be holding several town halls in the state in the next few days. Meanwhile, former U.N. Ambassador Nikki Haley and Florida Governor DeSantis are expected to have events here in the Hawkeye State starting on Saturday. Anthony joins me now. Time to turn the page. What's happening in the sports world? Yeah, Tim, stay tuned for our newest sports spotlight story featuring a Nebraska high school football head coach with a storied legacy. That and more coming up in sports. Welcome back. Norfolk Catholic football has had huge success throughout the last four decades, big enough to extend their state record to 12 titles. But as good as the Knights have been, you can't think about the program without head coach Jeff Bell or Arno Noah Sacco. There's more in the newest Sports Spotlight. It's turned into a, a long haul for me here. A 42-year coaching career that started at Beaver Valley High School in 1982, Jeff Beller took the helm of Norfolk Catholic in 1985, two seasons after the program's first state title. The nerves were that they were pretty good, and now you know I got to try to make sure that we kind of can continue this uh, uh, outstanding football program. The Walt Hill native won his first championship with Norfolk Catholic in 1991. Turns out, it was far from his last. <laughs> Jeff has coached the Knights to over 35 playoff appearances, seven runner-up finishes, and a state record 11 titles, taking the program to unprecedented levels of success. The continuity of a coaching staff working with young people, I think, is big in, in terms of always getting the things you want to get out of a, you know, each team. He's the best motivator I've ever met. It's just something about how he says things and what he says. It makes you want to work hard. And as Beller built a dynasty, milestones followed. 
Surpassing 200 and 300 career wins across his career, the 2016 National Coach of the Year reached uncharted waters this fall, achieving career win number 400 over Ponca on October 6th, solidifying himself into a league of his own. 300 stands out a lot to me because my son was involved in that team and we had a really good run at that time. We, were, we had won uh, two state championships, the 400 this year that uh, really had a good group this year that uh, really got better and better and better as the year went on. Scoring 44 points per game while allowing only 10, the Knights hit their top mark at Memorial Stadium. Back-to-back -back unbeaten seasons for back-to-back C2 state titles. When I was young, just watching, uh, watching the success that they had and I always just dreamed of, of getting to be a part of that. So it, it's, really, it's really a good feeling to be able to continue on the tradition here. Understand that I care for them and I'll do anything I can for them uh, in terms of uh, development of a young man, uh, development trying to get him to a college. 406 career wins and counting. But Jeff will be the last one to tell you about him. His bigger mission, seeing his players carry that success beyond the field. He teaches more than just football. He teaches life lessons. Life isn't always about winning but it's about giving everything you have and working hard. And the Nebraska High School Hall of Famer says he's got more time left to give with the headset. Fired up for that next kickoff, well, I mean to make a difference in the lives of his players. The more you can all strive towards that, the greater opportunity for success. So uh, I think that's been probably my biggest blessing here has been the people. All right, Noah, thanks so much. And that'll be all for sports. We'll be back after the break.